Hi everyone, this is part two of my series on exposure for beginners. And in part one, I covered the basic concepts of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, and how those settings affect exposure, and the kinds of numbers you will use when you're changing those settings. In this video, I'm going to be going over the relationship between these three settings, and also the concept of stops. What is a stop, and how many stops are there? Because a lot of times you hear photographers talk about stops when they're adjusting their exposure. They might say things like, I need to stop my lens down, or they might say, I'm going to add two stops to my shutter speed. What does that mean? And I'm going to try and explain that to you so that you can take better control of your exposure and take better pictures. So let's do a quick recap from part one. These are your typical exposure numbers that you'll see for the various settings. And we know that faster shutter speeds, like 1 800th of a second, will let less light in than slower shutter speeds of 1 1 25th of a second. And higher aperture numbers, they have something like f22, will let a lot less light in than faster apertures, say 1.4. And remember, there's an inverse relationship. Uh, and ISO, depending on the base ISO of your camera, will artificially or digitally brighten the image. So if your camera has a base ISO, say, of 200, you can brighten the image by setting your ISO higher, say, something like 3200. And in some cases, you can even lower the ISO from the base ISO to digitally or artificially darken the image. Now, what I'm going to be doing today is explaining the relationship between these three settings. Because all of these settings are basically controlling the light and they can be indexed onto a scale called stops. So what is a stop? It's basically you're either doubling the light or cutting the light in half via your exposure settings, but it's always relative to your base exposure or your starting exposure. So first let's talk about how a stop is relative to your base or starting exposure. So the easiest way to look at it is just look at the simple centimeter scale. If we start at eight centimeters and pick a point here at nine centimeters, how far away is nine centimeters from one, uh, eight centimeters? It's just one centimeter, right? We wouldn't say it's nine centimeters just because there's a nine here on the scale. Because we start at eight centimeters, this nine is only one centimeter away. And same thing goes for 10. We're now two centimeters away. And at 11, it's three centimeters. Again, I wouldn't say it's 11 centimeters. I would say it's three centimeters. And if I go in the opposite direction, we're negative one centimeters away from the eight. Now negative two. Now negative three if we're at the five centimeter point. So our base point on this ruler, our starting point, is at eight centimeters, so we put that at zero. And this is exactly how a stop is relative to your starting exposure. But instead of centimeters, we use settings like aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So if this were an aperture scale, instead of say a uh, centimeter scale, I would just put an F8 here, right here. I would say, okay, part of our starting exposure has an F8. And if I want to increase the exposure by one stop, I would say maybe go to F9, right? Uh, it's not F9 because aperture and shutter speed and ISO use different metrics. They're in a different scale. So we'll talk about that next. But first, let's understand what one stop is. Now, a stop is either doubling the light or cutting the light in half. It's very easy to understand what doubling the light is. So, for example, we have one light bulb here, and this will be our base amount of light and we want to double the light, all we have to do is just add one more light bulb. Simple as that. So now we've doubled the amount of light in a room by adding an additional light bulb. So another way to say it is we've increased the light in the room by one stop. Now, we want to double the light again because each stop is doubling the light. How many light bulbs would we need to add? Simply, we would just add two more light bulbs, right? So now we've added another stop of light to the room because we've doubled the light again. We went from two light bulbs to four light bulbs. So this is 
two stops brighter now because we have four light bulbs. And if we want to double it again, follows the same logic, right? We have four light bulbs now. We want to double the light. We need eight total light bulbs in the room. So I'll just add those in. Now we have added three stops of light to the room. So that's a relatively simple concept to understand. But the most profound thing here is with stops, because it's doubling each time, each stop is actually quite a bit more light. So if we look at our base light of zero, one light bulb, and we go up one stop with two light bulbs, we now have twice as much light. If we want to add another stop, we have to add two more light bulbs. So now we have four light bulbs. How bright is that? Or how much brighter is that? It's actually four times brighter than our original light bulb, single light bulb. And if we go to three stops, we're now eight times brighter than we were when we started with the one light bulb. So increasing the number of stops exponentially increases the brightness. And the reverse is true. So let's look at the reverse. Let's say our base exposure or our base lighting is actually eight light bulbs. So we're going to start here again at zero. And if I want to cut the light in half or go negative one stop, I have to get rid of four light bulbs or turn off four light bulbs. So now we're at negative one stop light from where we started with the eight light bulbs. Now, if I want to cut the light in half again, since we have four light bulbs that cut that in half, I would turn off two more light bulbs, right? So now we're at negative two stops. And if we have two light bulbs left and I want to cut the light in half again, I would turn off one more light bulb. And now we're negative three stops from where we started. So the concept of stops is really simple, right? We're either doubling the light or cutting the light in half. But I want you to appreciate the scale of stops, right? Because three stops is not three times brighter. Three stops is eight times brighter than our base exposure. And this will hopefully give you some perspective when you hear people say things like, yeah, I can recover shadows from up to five stops. And it's like, wow, you know, that's a big deal because that, we're not talking about brightening an image by five stops. We're talking about brightening an image 32 times, right? As bright as where they started from. So now let's talk about what is one stop when we're talking about shutter speed, or what is one stop on the aperture scale, and what is one stop on the ISO scale? Because once we can index these three different settings in terms of stops, we'll be able to make adjustments so that we can take better exposures and better pictures. So let's look at our typical exposure numbers again, and we have our shutter speed settings, aperture, and ISO. Let's say we start with a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second. We'll call that our starting point. So I'm going to put a zero there, just like I did on the ruler, just like I did on the uh, light bulbs and everything else. But I'm just going to put it here on the shutter speed. And I want to increase the exposure by one stop. I can do that by doubling the length of the shutter speed, right? So I would just set the shutter speed to 1 one fiftieth of a second. So now the shutter is staying open twice as long as it was at 1 one hundredth of a second. And if I want to double it again or add another stop to the exposure, I would just go to 1 25th of a second. Now I'm leaving the shutter open twice as long as I did at 1 50th of a second and twice as long again as I did at 1 100th of a second. And going in the opposite direction, if I cut the shutter speed in half, 1 200th of a second, we're now at negative one stop. And if I cut it in half again, we're at negative two. And then again, we're at 1 800th of a second or negative three stops. And if you look at this, it's a very linear scale, right? 1 800th of a second is eight times, letting eight times less light in than our starting exposure or shutter speed of 1 100th of a second, right? But it's still, it's three stops on the stop scale. Now, I'm going to come back to aperture because it's not a linear scale, but it's not hard. We'll come back to that uh, after I do ISO. Now, if we look at ISO and we start with a base ISO, say, of 100, and I want to double the brightness, because remember, ISO digitally enhances the brightness, I would just have to go to ISO 200. 
And if I want to double it again, I would go to ISO 400. If I want to double it again, meaning plus three stops, I'm now at ISO 800. And again, this is a nice linear scale. You can see that 800 ISO is eight times brighter than 100 ISO, but it's only three stops on the stop scale. Now let's look at the aperture scale. I mean, it's a little different, but I'm going to make it very simple for you. Now the aperture numbers are the numbers or scale that we use on our lenses. And the aperture numbers are actually a relationship between the focal length of the lens and the opening of the iris within the lens using the aperture blades. And there's a formula for it, but basically you only have to memorize two numbers, 1.4 and 2. And we can build out the entire aperture scale in terms of stops. So let's just start with 1.4. If we double 1.4, we go to 2.8. We double 2.8, we go to 5.6. We double 5.6, we get 11.2, but they always round it, so we'll just put at, uh, 11 or F11. And then we double that again, and we get to 22. Now let's take the number two. We go to two, we double that, we get four. We double that, we get eight. We double that we get 16. And this is the aperture scale in terms of stops. So if we start with a base, our starting aperture say is 5.6, if we want to decrease the amount of light, remember this is an inverse relationship on the scale, we would go to F8. So we're at minus one. And if we want to cut the light in half again, we would go to F11, we're at minus 2 and minus 3 at F16. And go in the opposite direction, meaning we want more light to come into the camera. This would be plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. And that's really all there is to understanding how many stops there are from one aperture to the next. So aperture 2 is twice as bright as aperture 2.8. 2.8 is twice as bright as F4. And f5.6 is twice as bright as f4. So now that we know how to index all of our settings in terms of stops, let's put all this together and look at our exposure settings side by side, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. So let's go back to our typical exposure numbers and settings for shutter speed, aperture, and ISO slide. And if we take a picture with our camera, let's say we're in full auto mode, and the camera picks you know, 1 100th one of a second at 5.6 at ISO 200. And I review the picture, and again, it's a little bit blurry. There's some motion blur there, and I really wanted to freeze the action, say, of, you know, my dog running. Um, I would pick a higher shutter speed. So I said, okay, so I put the camera into shutter priority, and then I pick a shutter speed of 1 800th of a second. Now, the camera is going to have to compensate for the faster shutter speed, because now we're letting in how many stops less light. We're letting in, there's negative one, negative two, negative three stops of light compared to the original exposure that we took. And it can do that by either lowering the aperture number or increasing the ISO number, right? And I have the settings here set up in full stops. So what are the options? Let's say I'm using an f2.8 lens. That's the maximum aperture for that lens. Well, we can gain two stops right here, right? There's plus one, plus two. But we're still one stop short, right? Because now our exposure is going to be one stop darker than our original exposure. So we can add one more stop by raising the ISO 400. So most likely, if I was using an f2.8 lens, the camera will choose these settings in shutter priority rather than the original settings when I had it in full auto. Uh, let's take another example. So let's say I'm using the 40 to 150 kit lens and it has an aperture of f5.6, you know, at 150 millimeters. Now the camera cannot lower the aperture number because we're already at the maximum aperture for this lens at f5.6. So it's going to have no other choice than to raise the ISO by three stops, right, to keep the exposure the same. So we have one, two, three, 
You can see that if I take this picture again using a different lens, the camera is going to have to raise the ISO 1600 to maintain the same exposure and then freeze the action, right, to make up for that 1 800th of a second shutter speed. So let's take another example. Let's say I want to take a picture of a landscape. And someone told me, says, yeah, you want to take landscape pictures, you know, put your camera in aperture priority, set the lens to f8, and take the picture. So I said, oh, okay. I put the camera in aperture priority. I select f8. And then the camera does this for the exposure. Let's say it decides to take it at 1 200th of a second at ISO 800. And I'll look at that, and I'm like, you know, there's just a little bit of grain in this image, and I really don't need to use a shutter speed that fast for a landscape because I'm not trying to freeze any action. So what I would probably do when I see an exposure like this, I might just put the camera into manual mode and change the exposure myself. But now that you understand the scale and the stops and everything, this is very, very easy to do. So the first thing I'll do is say, I'm going to put the camera down to its base exposure or its base ISO so I can get the best image quality. So I'm going to pick ISO 200 if I'm using, say, my Olympus camera. So what did we do? We lowered this by two stops, right? Negative one, negative two. So I need to make up for that using the shutter speed because I don't want to change my aperture. I'm going to make up for it using my shutter speed, so I'm going to add two stops here, plus one, plus two. So that now our exposure will be the same because now we're back to zero, right? Minus two plus two equals zero. Now I have a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second at F8, ISO 200. Much better settings for a landscape. So as you can see, once you understand the relationship between these three settings and how to adjust them based on stops, you'll be able to take much more control of your camera and adjust the settings so you can get the best images possible for each different kind of scenario, like I use for landscapes, or right? like you use for sports and action. If you need a faster shutter speed, is your lens going to be fast enough to adjust for the light without raising the ISO too high? And if you're doing landscapes, you know, if you're at f8, are you going to be able to and hold the camera if the shutter speed goes below 1 50th of a second, right? So as you know, our cameras don't always use nice whole numbers like I've shown here in the tutorial. You know, it'll pick weird shutter speeds like 1 3 20th of a second or f 2.3 or, you know, ISO 250. And in my next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on the camera how you can make adjustments to the shutter speed, ISO, and aperture in full stops or in a third of a stop so that you can easily make these adjustments just like I did here using whole numbers. Now, thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. But either way, hopefully we'll see you again soon.